What's up guys, this is Rob with Animus Visual Reviews and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Feutech AK4000. It's really not that exciting actually. Unfortunately, I wanted to love this gimbal a lot and it just really fell short of my expectations. I'm gonna explain to you guys why. So a little background on the AK4000. It does have a payload of 8.8 .8 pounds. It comes with four 18650 batteries as well as a micro USB charger and cable. Charge time is about five hours and does have about a 12 hour runtime, which is pretty comparable to most gimbals on the market currently. So before I get into all the negatives, I do want to give this gimbal some praise and go through all the pros. There actually is a lot of good things about this gimbal that I wish other gimbal makers would take note of. I'm going to start with the fact that this thing is very lightweight. Uh, it's actually the lightest of all of the gimbals that I have tested. I have personally tried the Moza Air 2, which I had and sold for other reasons. Uh, if you want to know why, you can ask me in the comments. Um, I tried the Ronin S for like all of half a day and there were some issues that I had with that and I did not like it. And with this gimbal, I have been using it with my Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera and I loved it initially. As soon as I put it on, it balanced. It felt very good in my hands. It's, I mean, pretty solidly built. Again, it's lightweight and I really, really, really like that since all of the new like heavier payload gimbals are now like three to four pounds. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that you can take it apart. One of the problems that I had, okay, I'm just gonna figure out how to take it apart. <laughs> Another pro of this gimbal is that it can be taken apart. That's a very useful thing when you're traveling, especially if you happen to get on a plane or if you're hiking out in the mountains and you have a backpack that is a certain size, you can break it down and kind of store it in different compartments and it's a little bit easier to carry and travel with. One of the big issues I had with the Moza Air myself was the fact that it's just one single unit, one body, and you can't really take that apart. So if it just doesn't fit in your bag, you have to get creative with a way to carry it. Another cool feature of this gimbal, now mind you, this is not necessarily a feature specific to Fayetech, uh, but it is the only gimbal that I've known that comes with this extension rod that they like to call it um, And it actually gets screwed into the base of the gimbal like so And you get a lot more leverage when making a lot of the moves I'm actually planning on getting something like this myself for just whatever gimbal I decide to buy next It definitely helps a lot especially with lower shots where you can actually bring it down a lot lower without having to bend over Especially if you're a taller guy like myself um, and also if you wanted to get higher shots, you can also lift a lot more and it just overall gives you a much better grip and again, just better leverage when taking certain shots. Another pro that I have is, I mean, this is probably a pro for many of them, but it can hold a pretty large camera. In this case, I have my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with the Tilta cage on it. I mean, as we all know, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is really wide. And of course the cage adds yet another inch or so, maybe a little bit less. And it still has some room to go on both the bottom end here, because you can actually shift this bottom plate over uh, to give it a little bit more room, as well as of course do the balancing on the roll axis motor. So I'm actually quite impressed with the fact that it can hold this camera, you know, as is with no extra plates or anything weird like that. Another pro that it has is that it does come with this cool standard riser plate. Um, it is in Manfrotto based, so if you have a Manfrotto tripod, you can easily switch from here to sticks. But again, the fact that it has this riser piece uh, for the Sony cameras, especially as we know, if you own any of the bigger lenses, like I myself have a couple of the G Masters, um, they're pretty wide. And a lot of times you'll end up rubbing the rings on the actual plate itself on most gimbals. So I do find it interesting that it has a built-in riser and uh, it actually works pretty well for the A7s. And probably my last thing that I like about this gimbal um, is that the trigger is very recessed. Frankly, it's quite out of the way, which I really like. So is the wheel. The wheel is actually very responsive, as you can see here. And um, it's again, kind of out of the way and not very big and uh, works well. Another thing is the joystick as well over here is not sticking out kind of like the Ronin S is. I don't think I would really run into a major problem with it, but you know, things that stick out like that tend to get caught on stuff or could end up bending or breaking on something. So I do like the fact that it is a little bit more clean of a design. All right, so now for the moment that we've all been waiting for. Why does this gimbal suck? I'll start with the minor things first. Number one, what is up with that? <laughs> um, I don't even know what to say. 
I did not find any way in any of the settings or the app to turn off the sound that it makes when it turns the gimbal on or off apparently. While it's probably a minor thing for a lot of people, if I'm at some kind of event where it's quiet or at a wedding, the last thing I need is for my gimbal telling everybody that I'm turning it on or turning it off. And now for this gimbal's fatal flaw. It just isn't smooth. There's no customization to this gimbal at all in comparison to things like the DJI Ronin S or M, as well as the Moza Air 2, which has a more developed app. This gimbal just doesn't have enough customization to make it usable. It has three modes for the sensitivity settings, and that is just action, default, and smooth. This action is pretty cool, it's pretty quick, it's snappy. If you're trying to do whip pans or things like that on a gimbal, that would be the mode you're gonna end up using. Uh, default is, I mean, just like it sounds, default, and I mean, it's somewhere in between smooth and action mode. But smooth, however, is actually not very smooth at all. Uh, the beginning of each pan or tilt was actually quite jerky and it's very difficult for you to manually set that into a smooth motion. Anytime you start, if it's any more than just a slight rotation, uh, you're gonna get like a little jerky motion right before it starts the movement. And there's absolutely no way to set that. In other gimbals, for example, you have things like the dead band that you can set so it doesn't start rotating till you get to a certain point. And of course, sensitivity, which you can change in a lot of gimbals to smooth out some of the motions, especially again, when you're starting or slowing down a motion. Unfortunately, that is its biggest drawback. The app has absolutely no use. I don't know why the app even exists. It's everything that you can do in the app, you can do in the touch screen, other than possibly remote controlling it. Another thing that, at least for me personally, I don't think this bothers many people since not everybody cares for the feature. However, I am a big fan of the roll only mode or the famous inception mode that they have nowadays where you basically you know hold the camera flashlight mode and then the camera just rotates around the axis it's a very cool shot it's starting to be used more and more in different videos travel videos and the like and it's just a different type of shot that you can use in your tool set it is notably absent to me from this one and while they have it where you can do a rotation in all follow mode which is something like this As you can see, something like that just is not very smooth um, and it's just awkward to have to rotate your entire camera and rig and gimbal. I feel like I'm in a circus and if this falls out of my hands, I'm going to be hurting. So just not very useful to me and uh, I tried doing it in different ways. For example, just using the all follow mode and rotating the joystick and again, due to the limited functionality and the fact that you really can't customize anything in the app or in the touchscreen for that matter, there's no way to set the speed of the rotation. So it just comes out painfully slow. And due to the lack of customization, you can't set the speed at which you rotate the joystick in order to get that roll only mode. Also, of course, being all follow, any motion in any direction will also change the camera angle. So it really isn't very useful at all. And again, I would say it's completely missing. At the same time, I do also want to note that the all follow mode is kind of interesting and it does provide this smooth handheld look. So it could come in here handy depending on what you're shooting. Well, I do think that Fatex on the right track with their gimbals, both the AK2000 and AK4000. However, the functionality just isn't there. I feel like the app is half-baked, the gimbal is half-baked, and it needs maybe a couple more firmware upgrades and some development into the app and some additional tweaking in order to get this to really shine. Overall, I would not recommend it. I recently purchased the tilt gravity G2X, so I'm looking forward to trying that, possibly making a review. Let me know if you're interested and I'll take the time to do that for you guys so thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe to the channel if there's any content you specifically want to see related to filmmaking lighting things like that i'm going to try to get more videos out for you guys but i want to know what do you want to see let me know in the comment section and i'll be sure to get back with you guys and see if i can make it happen peace